are going to go ahead and get things started here. So once again, for all of those who just joined, you are participating in Supervisor Jane Parker's second virtual Hot Topics meeting. We have about 35 people on the line. Um, if we could keep everyone on mute uh, so that uh, the voice of Jane and her guests are, are heard, uh, that would be fabulous. We will have some time for questions uh, towards the end of the hour. Um, but you've uh, joined Supervisor Jane Parker's virtual Hot Topics meeting. It's about 532 and I think I'm going to pass it off over to Jane so we can go ahead and get started. Oh, Jane, we've got you on mute. Let's get you unmuted here. All right, bear with us all. Okay, there we go, yeah. Jane. Hello. First I was muted, then I was unmuted, then I was muted again. <laughs> um, thank you, Wendy. Um, thanks everybody for joining in today. I want to um, just kind of let you know the shape of the of the hot topics today. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a couple housekeeping things. Then we are gonna turn this over to uh, Nick Chulos, our assistant uh, county administrative officer to give us today's update on what's going on uh, from the, the county perspective. And then Wendy is going to walk us all through county resources um, and, and other uh, trusted information sources so that you can get an idea of where to find information that you might want. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about strategies that I've been using and then other resources that are available for um, my mental health and uh, trying not to go completely uh, ballistic um, it, in the uh, joys of sheltering in place. So. Um, and then, uh, and of course, throughout this, we do encourage your questions and comments. I think once, once Nick Chulos um, has, let's see, maybe, um, so there are a couple ways we can deal with um, questions and comments. One is uh, if you're on Zoom, if you would use the raise hand feature, we can recognize you. Uh, to um, ask a question or make a comment. Another helpful thing is if you're on Zoom, if you use the chat function, uh, that allows us to um, see the question or uh, if you, if you um, uh, have it go to everyone, then everyone can see the question or the comment, that's helpful. Um, or if you're on the phone, or not otherwise able to use the Zoom functions, feel free to email us at district4, that's district spelled out, and then the number four, at co.monterey.ca.us, kind of our county formula. Um, and as you probably know, the, the district four office is closed to um, walk-in traffic, but my staff, uh, Lori Chapel, Wendy Root Askew, and Christy Markey, and I are working virtually and we're doing our best to respond to um, questions, inquiries, comments that, um, that anybody uh, has and, and brings to our attention. Um, and you can still call us uh, the, our phone um, extensions are being sent directly to us. Um, the general office number is 883-7570. And I think Lori is putting some of this information in the chat area so that you have it available to you if you're on Zoom. Um, and then, uh, of course, you can always contact us at district4 at co.monterey.ca.us, and we will get back to you as promptly as we can. Um, uh, just so you know, in addition to doing these Hot Topics meetings, I am each week uh, holding Zoom meetings with the mayors in District 4 to make sure that they're getting the information they need to respond to their constituents. Um, and then uh, at the Board of Supervisors level, we get a briefing a couple of times a week. Uh, that keeps us updated and then the 
uh, the county is also providing media briefings to um, news outlets to keep everyone as current as possible. Um, so we will, um, in addition, you know, the county is still doing what the county does, providing um, all the other services as well as mobilizing for this um, COVID-19. So um, we're we're sort of uh, trying to fire on all cylinders here. Um, so if you weren't able to attend last week's Hot Topics, it is available on YouTube. And um, this one also will be recorded and will be available uh, on YouTube as well. And um, Lori or Wendy, do we have a direct link to that? Or how would, how would people find the, the YouTube video? Wendy, uh, you're muted, I think, still. Somebody who has uh, uh, COVID-19 and also starting to see community oh, transmission. Yep, sorry, that's it. I just put it on, but we'll get it posted in the link. Bear with me here. Okay. But I can't stress enough the importance of us uh, abiding by. I was like, where did Elsa come from? Okay, yep, we're <laughs> good. We'll get it in the link and we'll have it posted as well. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Um, and then also tomorrow, uh, at the Board of Supervisors meeting, the the primary item of business um, is a COVID-19 update. And of course, those meetings are live streamed. You're welcome to participate that way. And the, they also are um, videoed. So there will be an archive recording of, of whatever information is presented there. So let's see. Um, what else? I think... Um, that is probably enough for me at the moment. I will just remind you that um, I, I think Christy is here as well, right? We have um, Wendy Root, Askew, Christy Markey, and Lori Chapel uh, participating in this meeting. So um, we will be uh, trying to capture any uh, questions or comments that, that, you, that you have. And I think I'll turn it over to Nick Chulos, the Assistant County Administrative Officer, to give us kind of a uh, a current update on what what's going on from the the county's perspective. Okay, thank Go you, ahead. thank you, Supervisor Parker, and and uh, okay. to all of those of you who have joined the virtual meeting. Um, I want to give just a quick overview of, as Supervisor Parker said, some of the major initiatives we're working on and some of the major county functions that are occurring while we're dealing with this. Uh, as you can imagine, Supervisor Parker mentioned that we're working on regular county business, so to speak, normal county business, and the business of responding to the COVID emergency. Uh, we've got a lot of staff resources devoted to this emerging public health issue, and we're really devoting an awful lot of effort into addressing everything that we can uh, as best we can. Um, I'm going to go through just some of the major functions that we're working on, give you a quick update on what we're doing. Uh, our emergency operations center is up and running and has been really for several weeks. Uh, we are at level two at the moment. And what that means is it's a, it's a three level. Level three is the least intensive. Level two is mid-level and level one is the most intensive. And what happens at the EOC is we bring together staff from the county and other agencies to work on planning, responding to issues, logistics of which is a big issue right now. Uh, care and shelter, which is another issue which I'll touch on in just a minute. We're evaluating the possible need to go up to level one. Um, we have about 40 people working either at the EOC or remotely, uh, and we may need to add more, um, more staff and more teams to that effort. So we'll keep you posted on that. As far as the health department goes, um, their laboratory capacity is up to now they're able to test 80 samples per day. Uh, they can get same day results or within 24 hours, depending on when the sample is taken. As you probably know from looking at the briefings that we put out, the health department is now in a position to where there's been enough sampling and enough test confirmation to where they're releasing a, a fairly broad level of demographic information. It's not in super detail, but it's a broad, but gives you a little bit of a sense of you know, where, uh, where some of the trends are occurring. And then the health department in conjunction with the Tibidad Medical Center is working on a, a more robust, but very short set of 
public um, uh, public information spots in Spanish language as well as some of the indigenous uh, languages that are prevalent in the Salinas Valley uh, area. Um, Department of Social Services is has been very busy working on a plan to uh, address the homeless uh, situation in terms of a shelter plan. Uh, it's a top priority for us at the county at the moment. It's one of our most vulnerable populations and we're devoting a lot of effort to determining what the best approach is to identifying and then sheltering those individuals who are uh, in, in the greatest need in the homeless community. It involves working both with our public health team, uh, Dr. Moreno and his staff, as well as the service providers, which would be uh, some of the uh, nonprofits as well as the county department of social services. Um, the, uh, we just learned today that FEMA has agreed to reimburse up to 75% of costs regard, uh, related to sheltering the homeless under very sort of tight restrictions as far as what level of uh, you know, people who have been confirmed uh, positive and, and who are awaiting test results. So we're very encouraged with that. Uh, it, 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 it's, we're still ferreting out the details of that. We just got off a, a conference call on that just a few minutes ago. Um, I was asked at an earlier meeting whether we've had an uptick in uh, child abuse, uh, reported child abuse during this emergency. And I checked with our social services director and she said no, that they have not received that type of uptick at the moment. So um, that's, that's good news. Uh, our sheriff reports that the count in the jail is down, the, the daily census is down to about 740 uh, inmates. They are uh, applying a 14-day quarantine to any new incoming booked uh, individuals to try to minimize the spread of any potential virus in the jail. Um, our agricultural commissioner is working with the agricultural industry on uh, has worked with them on protocols um, to try to protect farm workers and the ag industry from the impact of coronavirus. Um, that's a work in progress. There's still more work to be done. And I know he is, our ag commissioner is committed to continuing to work with the agricultural industry to try to protect the, the workers in that uh, very critical um, industry. Our 911 call center reports that call volume is down. Uh, at the moment, which is a good thing. Um, they are taking a lot of precautions to frequently disinfect the 911 call center because as I mentioned earlier in the day at another meeting, uh, we're very worried that if our dispatchers become ill, that's gonna really cause a significant problem. And there just aren't uh, dispatchers out there that you can bring in to back the ones up that we have. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to keep them uh, up and running. In terms of our economic development arm, uh, we're doing work uh, staffing a, a small business disaster assistance loan hotline. Uh, we're doing work on unemployment for all of the individuals who have been affected by some of the layoffs that have occurred hugely in the hospitality industry uh, at the moment. Um, our child support services office is open. Um, they, they, have, they report that they've been able to function. Uh, there have been some statewide directives from the, the state office uh, on um, putting a hold on various types of uh, funding or collections that the um, child support services would normally be involved in. Um, Natividad Medical Center is gonna be opening possibly tomorrow, I, I think, a, a dedicated isolation unit where they have basically created a space with a negative pressure room um, set up that will allow them to care for COVID positive patients who require hospitalization. And they've also established a bilingual hotline at Natividad. And then finally, um, they are working with, Natividad is working with the area hospitals to determine uh, surge capacity of our hospitals in Monterey County. Uh, so that, that's kind of a very quick overview of kind of the main outward facing uh, parts of the county operation that are either directly involved in or uh, impacted by the COVID virus. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Nick. Um, if, uh, if people have questions, uh, please raise your hand or use the chat function. 
um, or send an email to district4 at co.monterey.ca.us. And uh, Nick, actually a question came in uh, inquiring as to why the shelter in place order is specifying that we should go outside and get fresh air, um, mm. but to do that in our neighborhood rather than going, um, you know, why is it not encouraged to go to um, uh, Fort Ord or the beach or uh, other locations? Well, I, th I think the, the general idea there is to minimize travel. And I think uh, the, the, the thought being that if you're able to take a walk in your neighborhood, uh, it's better than getting in a car and driving a long distance to, to, to recreate. I think, it, I, I don't know all the reasoning for that particular thing, but I, I believe that just minimizing travel is a, is a key item in that. Right, okay. And uh, of course, in addition to social distancing, sometimes uh, beaches or some of these other areas, the rec trail might get a little crowded and it'd be harder to keep that six foot um, distance. Yeah, uh, particularly question, as, as, as we saw in Southern California, the beach situation there that prompted the governor to speak out about it, you know, that, that type of thing. So, Great, thank you. Um, another question is, um, uh, someone would like to know if there is anything that we can do as community members to uh, help uh, move the, um, the members of our community who are unsheltered um, into um, safety and, and shelter. Uh, is there anything community members can do? Well, you know, we're, we're working very closely with the Continuum of Care, which really is the coordinator for the homeless uh, service providers or the, the groups that provide service, um, you know, they are working to identify the known areas where we can actually locate individuals who are homeless and, and if they're symptomatic, if they need to be looked at or moved to relocate them. Um, I, I think probably what the community members could do was would be to, to, to let us know, to keep us informed if, if there's any particularly if we're finding pockets of, of the homeless, you know, who are in different neighborhoods or parts of the community where your constituents might be, Jane. So. Great, thank you. And I think too, of course, any uh, support that people um, might want to lend to the existing nonprofit providers who are working with um, mm -hmm. with the homeless um, is is probably helpful as well. That would be very helpful. Yes, it would. Um, there's a question about uh, someone has a question about the um, uh, a rent freeze. I think this may mean um, the eviction the the eviction notice, um, right. and uh, they're interested in knowing whether the whether there is a, a rent freeze and whether there would be the the uh, kind of uh, rent forgiveness um, because their point is that industry in our area will be slow to recover and it would be very difficult for people who have been um, laid off or having their hours greatly reduced um, to uh, make up um, any any shortfall in rent that they experienced during the acute part of the crisis. Yeah, Supervisor, I'm not aware that there's a rent freeze. There, there is, as you're probably aware, or I'm sure you are aware, there is a, a an eviction um, moratorium that's in place in the county. The board adopted a an ordinance to that effect uh, last week, I believe. I'm not aware that there's any type of rent freeze in, in place. Um, I, I, I could look into that. I don't know if that's something that people are hearing about or if they're, if that's a suggestion, um, but I'd be glad to look into it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it may be, I think the idea there is the eviction moratorium, but I think whatever people, I think it would be up to individuals to work something out with their, with their landlords. There's nothing in the way of a rent freeze or no. any provision for uh, right. not having to pay uh, eventually. Another question is um, whether someone's gardener can come work in their yard. Um, this is a, a single uh, 
single gardener, um, you know, just one person and uh, the person asking the question stays uh, in the house while, um, while they're there. That's that sounds, that's, like, that's, sounds that's like a, a classic for the uh, frequently asked questions. I bet a lot of people have that question. Yeah. That that's a nuance that I'm I I don't think I can answer at the moment. Okay, we can. Um, I'd be glad to. I'd be glad. To, there there are a lot of, as you as you know, and I'm sure some of the people on the call here know, the 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 shelter in place order is is pretty specific, but there are many many questions that come up that require interpretation. That's one. I had not heard before. So I'd be glad to ask and find out and get back to you on that. Great. Um, and I understand that uh, Charles McKee has his hand up, so he may have um, an answer to that. Well, unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that. I was going to go back <laughs> to the, the eviction question and the rent freeze uh, question that um, the, the, I have heard of talk of trying to get statewide legislation on, on uh, rent free is not necessarily forgiveness, but rent free so it doesn't go up and uh, kind of playing in conjunction with the, mm. um, you know, the eviction moratorium, such so that it, it's not saying you are, um, uh, you don't have to pay the rent uh, at some point, but to, there's just a moratorium and hopefully it would stay at the same rate and wouldn't go up. As far as the evictions themselves, in addition to what the county has done. The state has, uh, the, the governor has issued a statewide tenant uh, residential and uh, um, dwelling unit eviction moratorium. It does not, ex the statewide uh, moratorium does not extend to businesses. However, the county eviction moratorium does. Um, Charles, while we've got you on this uh, subject, uh, what are the provisions from the state or the federal government to um, uh, help landlords recover from lost income, if any? Are they covered by any of the um, reimbursements or you know, FEMA funds or any of those pots of money? Yeah, I don't know of specifically on the FEMA funds. I, I kind of doubt it on the FEMA funds, but um, I think that if if their business is, uh, if that's their business to be a landlord, um, then there there's going to be some uh, pockets of relief for them as a business. A lot of that, a lot of those are going to become in the form of loans and not necessarily uh, just straight out grants. In addition, if they're uh, just like anyone else, if they are earning under seventy-five thousand dollars in an individual, I think it's one hundred and twenty-five. I think for a couple, uh, they will get a straight payment from the federal government. I think it's twelve hundred dollars um, that they will get from the federal government. So I don't, I don't know about any specifics for landlords that would come in addition to those kinds of avenues. Okay, thank you. I'm, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's kind of a uh, there's a threshold for people to um, receive that um, that money. That's interesting. Um, uh, there's a question about what's happening in terms of housing and housing projects and the permitting process. Uh, since we do have a shortage of affordable housing, are, is there any... Um, uh, thought about kind of keeping any of those projects that may be in the pipeline um, moving um, and allowing the permitting and the and then the new construction to begin. Uh, well, Nick, Nick may have some answers to that, but I'll start off with yep. that the you know the planning department and resource management agencies continuing to process. Um, uh, they're trying to do everything they can remotely, if if possible. Uh, so they're not stopping um, their work in that regard. In addition, the county's original uh, shelter-in-place order, uh, you know, exempted out construction uh, and, in particular, existing construction that was going on. And there was some difference between the state and the county order in that regard. Uh, and so I think the county's order uh, then made it for existing construction. And Nick may have a clarification on that. Well, no, I was just going to add, I, don't, I wouldn't add anything to that, Charles, just to clarify that the, the projects are still being reviewed. They're, they're being reviewed remotely by the RMA staff, the planning staff. Planning Commission 
did cancel their last meeting because we said all the the idea of having remote meetings just had um, surfaced or, or was really going to be implemented. My understanding is they plan to go ahead and meet in April. So projects that are under review should be able to proceed, you know, through the review process. Um, Great. And, the, Thank and you. The, hopefully the approval process. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's just, there's a comment. Um, there's someone who's in attendance who is just um, looking at the experience um, of China and the uh, how the lesson from that is to, you know, get as uh, on top of this as possible. So really encouraging the county to um, get raise the um, the emergency uh, services level to level one sooner rather than later. You know, not wait for there to be a crisis before we start um, taking measures. And of course, that that is the whole idea behind um, the state and the county issuing the shelter in place um, mm -hmm. earlier um, rather than later, which um, which we did. And then um, there was a question about the food bank. The food bank is getting a lot of requests for for food and they were asking for resources. I know the, the local foundations were finding ways to come up with uh, money to help support them and the county had just last week at our meeting um, committed uh, $250,000 uh, in immediate funding to the food bank. So um, hopefully that will, that will help. Um, uh, let's see, there's a question about can the self-employed gig economy have access to loans in this stimulus package? That may fall under the small business. Yeah, I think if you are a small business, then uh, you would be uh, able to access those kinds of loans under this under the stimulus package. In addition, if you if you um, uh, lost your job as uh, even if you're self-employed uh, and we're not paying into workers' compensation insurance, you are going to be eligible to receive workers' compensation. Let's, for example, if you have a business that you know, just right now cannot operate because it's not an essential business, but you're, you know, you're, you know, sole proprietor type of business in the gig economy or just as regular old sole proprietor, um, you, you being unable to work is, will be considered, uh, my understanding is you'll be considered as unemployed and be eligible for uh, workers' compensation. Hmm. Interesting. Not Thank workers, you. I mean, I mean, unemployment, not workers' unemployment. compensation. Unemployment. Unemployment. Sorry. My bad. Thank you. Jane, this is um, Wendy. I'm going to jump in real quick. Um, we are going to try something new here. I have a poll. We're going to launch a poll um, that will help us determine what kinds of special guests and topics we should focus on in future hot topics. So um, I'm not sure how it works if you're on the phone, but we'll go ahead and launch it. And if there's some um, feedback or if you have ideas or questions about specific topic areas that you'd like us to focus on in the future, please do um, send us an email and let us know things like, um, you know, what to do about loss of income and resources for those in our community who have lost income. Um, if you're concerned about specifically understanding what kinds of healthcare resources are available um, in our community, um, we could focus on that. Um, the work that's being done around responding to the homeless community and the needs of our unhoused population, we could bring in special guests who could speak more specifically to the funding that's available and the resources that are available. Uh, emotional support, some of the mental health resources that are available. Uh, we could have, um, we do have some, some, some things in the works uh, to focus on that. Uh, we're also just interested um, in this poll. Have you visited the county um, health department website uh, with COVID information? Uh, if you have, uh, let us know. If you haven't been to the website, uh, that would also be good information for us to have. So I think the poll is launched and we'll let that continue to play out. We will take all of the information that we get from you and plan future topics, future hot topics meetings um, around the information that would be most valuable for you to have. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Um, and I see that uh, someone has already suggested census 2020 as a, as a topic. Um, there's a question, uh, Nick, uh, about, or Charles, about property tax um, deadline. 
Um, there's been, I know, a lot of, well, a certain amount of interest in the community for having the um, deadline uh, moved. Um, and I know at least the last time I looked, the treasurer tax collector uh, was uh, actually is not able to do that um, at the county level, but maybe you could talk a little bit about what's, what is possible. Well, I, I, Charles may want to jump in on this, Supervisor Parker, but th that is correct. The, the, the tax collector does not have the legal authority to change the tax due date deadline. Um, th that's, th that's a decision for the state, is my understanding. Charles might want to clarify that further, but. Right, that is correct. Great, a couple um, questions related to, um, or question related to Natividad Medical Center as the, um, I think Nikki had talked about that the hospitals are preparing for a, a, a potential surge in patients. And this person wants to know um, uh, kind of where we are in terms of planning for the, the staffing um, and the and the support for those frontline workers, the nurses and and doctors and so on, if if there is a surge. Well, and and supervisor, that the as I said earlier, the, um, the Natividad Medical Center, Dr. Gray and Dr. Walls are reaching out to the other hospitals to come up with a, a uniform surge assessment um, uh, report. And my feeling or my understanding is that part of that would be an issue and would address not only bed capacity, but staffing capability. But that, that, that's being worked on now. That is being worked on. Great, thank you. And then uh, there's a question about uh, whether these hot topics sessions are available um, to people who are monolingual in various languages. Um, and uh, uh, as far as I know, we are, we are not uh, able to uh, translate these, uh, but uh, maybe Nick or Charles could talk about the, um, the language specific um, information that is being put out uh, both in written and um, audio form. Well, yes, we, we, Supervisor, we do have uh, you know, we're very concerned about our message reaching um, the, the Spanish language community. Uh, our information is, is translated. Um, we're also working on uh, short 30 second public service announcements to um, primarily targeted at the non-English speaking community. Uh, that would be the, the Spanish language community or the, the indigenous language community. Um, and those I believe the indigenous language messages have been, um, have started to be uh, aired. The Spanish language uh, version, I think, is close to being ready to air. But we're trying to put the word out as best, most thoroughly as we can to the non-English speaking community. That's great. Thank you. And hopefully that'll get out on social media and all kinds mm -hmm. of ways that can be re- uh, retweeted, resent, um, and spread. Uh, there yeah, we have a, we have a, a a couple of very competent uh, public information staff who are working very hard to put the message out in in a variety of formats. So, that's great. Thank you. Um, there's a question about what kinds of uh, services and outreach and support there is. Uh, for the undocumented uh, or residents who are um, uh, don't have documentation and who might have lost employment. Well, our 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 workforce development staff and our um, and our uh, social services staff are working, and I, I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but I, they've they've had a lot of contacts uh, to help individuals with unemployment uh, insurance coverage. I can't speak to the undocumented part of that. I, I don't know the answer to that as we sit here. I'd have to I'd have to ask our staff and get back to you on that one. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be good uh, for us to to know and maybe it can be in the um, somewhere in some frequently asked questions. I'll follow up on it. Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, 
Good. Any other questions for for Nick or Charles? Um, I, I do want to make sure that we make use of their vast knowledge while we have them, but also to let them get back to the administrative functions of the county uh, as uh, as soon as as we can as well. I'm not seeing anything at the moment in the um, in the chat, and I'm not seeing any hands raised. So I guess I will go ahead and thank you so much, Nick, um, and uh, to Charles, our um, chief administrative officer, and Nick Chulos, who is an assistant uh, administrative officer, for coming and spending time to really answer the questions of the community. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's always uh, helpful, I think, to get the message out directly. Glad to do it. Thank you. Great. Um, good. So, so next on our agenda is um, an opportunity for Wendy to uh, walk us through where information can be found um, on the county and other trusted source uh, websites. And so I think, Wendy, if you're ready, I'm we'll ready. Turn it over to you. Yeah, and I just wanted to thank everyone um, who's responding to the poll. I hope that, uh, that it popped up and you were able to see the questions and provide answers. Um, if you're not seeing the poll, but you want to let us know about ideas or suggestions for additional information that would be helpful for you to have, uh, feel free to email us at district4 at co.monterey.ca.us. We, um, we're, we're interested in knowing how we can be um, best of service to communicating with you and getting information that you need back out into the community. So I did want to make sure it does look like based on the poll responses that most folks have been to the uh, county um, website that has information about um, coronavirus. Uh, I wanted to make sure we pulled that up and give everyone a chance to see all of the information that's posted here. Um, on the county COVID website, which is mtyhd.org slash COVID-19. That's www.mtyhd.org slash COVID-19. We have information about the Monterey County Health Department's COVID hotline. If you have questions um, or concerns uh, or need to speak to a public health nurse, you may dial 769-8700. That's 769-8700. We have folks available at the County Health Department. Natividad has launched a bilingual hotline that runs um, seven days a week at 772-7365. All of this information is posted on the county's COVID website. Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System also has a coronavirus hotline, 755-0793. Um, and Montage Health uh, on the peninsula as well has a hotline at 622-8001. Uh, the Monterey County COVID website includes quite a bit of information, including the daily situational report that is being put out by the Office of Emergency Services. The daily situational report includes a summary of information that uh, is coming um, out uh, for the community. It uh, includes information about current testing numbers. It includes information about uh, declarations of emergency. It includes links to any of the press releases that the health department has issued. It's um, a, a great resource uh, for anyone who's wanting uh, current information from uh, directly from the county health department about what's going on. Uh, you can also go to the daily situation report and get signed up to receive it um, as it comes out every day. So you can either come to the website or you can look directly um, on the, the website and uh, sign up to receive that uh, email sent directly to you every day. Hey, um, Wendy? Yep. A question for you. I know the county is able to tell uh, people more information about the age of people who've tested positive for the virus and uh, what a general part of the county they they come from is that could you just let people know where they can find that is it part of the daily situation report or do they go uh, to the 
the health department's website or where? Yeah, so we have, um, there's a couple different places where that information is being kept. Uh, it is included in the daily situation report. If you scroll down to the bottom of the COVID website, the local data um, piece is where they're now posting as of this weekend information about the age groups, the gender, and the geographic region um, that people who have tested positive for COVID uh, live in. So as of uh, yesterday, we have uh, 40 confirmed cases of COVID. Um, those are people who have been tested um, and their results came back positive. And that breaks down, uh, you can see on the screen if you're watching, but it breaks down to um, within some different categories of age groups. So 15% of those are people over the age of 65. Um, we have a, a high number of uh, females, 63% of our positive tests have come back uh, from females. Um, the demographics are split pretty evenly. The Peninsula and the Big Sur area have 33% of the positive tests. Uh, the larger Salinas area has about 50% of positives and the uh, combined North County and South County um, are the remaining 15%. Um, about 25% uh, are related to travel, so people who have returned from travel to other locations um, and tested positive. 38% uh, is person-to-person -person transmission, and, and then uh, we're still doing um, investigation for another 20% to determine how, uh, as best as the health department can, determine how they, uh, how they identify, how they acquired uh, COVID. We've only, um, as of now, had one uh, COVID death in Monterey County, um, and we've had seven hospitalizations. So this information will continue to be updated, and, and I wanna, I think it's important that people know that, you know, as you ask for information, we're able to go back to County Health Department and tell them this is the information that the community wants. This is the information that people need to have, and they're responding to your request for information uh, to make that available to the public. Um, there's a few other websites that I wanted to point out um, and share with everyone, one of them being the County Office of Emergency Services. Um, so the health department is providing uh, the, the data and the County Office of Emergency Services is coordinating um, all of this information. So on the County Office of Emergency Services, this is one of our county departments that responds when we have county emergencies like fires or floods. Uh, and on this webpage, there's a place on the side where you can sign up to receive the daily report. So anyone who's interested in staying up to date, that's a great uh, spot to get more information. Um, a few other really, really valuable resources that I'm uh, finding myself referencing on a daily basis include the California Department of Public Health. Uh, they've got some great information available, um, as well as some of the directives from the governor's office, um, alerts, statewide data that's available to us information in other languages. Uh, that is one thing where it's uh, been very helpful to have the state providing additional information. Um, they, they have information in English, uh, Spanish, Chinese, um, a, a number of other uh, formats and languages. So I've appreciated referencing that when it's needed. Um, the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization are great locations to look for trusted, accurate information. And the California COVID response website, um, which is uh, covid19.ca.gov, um, also has information in a very easy to understand and simple format. So when I'm looking to pull information out that I can quickly reference, they have statewide uh, press releases. They also have a, uh, a compilation of resources around uh, economic issues. So if you're have questions about your taxes or employment, you can find that in one location. You can get information about communication. You can find out uh, sort of what the state is doing to help us respond locally. Uh, 211 is receiving significant inflow of phone calls. They've been a central location where the county is sharing information with 211, and then 211 is making that information available. 
So if you have questions about uh, where do I find food, 211 has the answer. If you have questions about, you know, where do I get information about what's up with this property tax, and I heard there was a letter from the tax assessor, 211 can help you find that information in all of these websites. So you can always contact them. Um, a couple other general updates uh, that we have, and I think I'm going to try to navigate my way back to our main uh, COVID website. So we've got 2 in one In order to receive uh, general updates about uh, COVID, you can text um, COVID-19, oh, say, you can text MCCOVID, M-C-C-O-V-I-D, see here, M-C-C-O-V-I-D to 888-777, and you'll get general updates via text message about COVID-19 um, in Monterey County. We also have a new system where for, uh, if you want to receive media alerts as they're posted, uh, we can get you on, on a media alert uh, text message, and that would be to text MC Media. MC Media to 888-777. And um, that should have been posted on the website here. I know I saw it earlier, but a lot of information is posted on here. Um, let's see here, a couple other just sort of quick things I wanted to mention. Um, the, The county's COVID hotline for questions um, is posted. Uh, it is 769-8700, or you can send emails with your questions to COVID-19 at co.monterey.ca.us. Um, and we will get information back out to you. Uh, so this, this website though is the one spot that I keep open on my webpage and as people contact us with questions, it's the place where I go to find answers to your questions. And we're asking the county health department to continue posting as much information here as possible. So we just wanted to make sure everyone had uh, this, this detail. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to Jane. We've got about 10 minutes left, a little more than 10 minutes. And you've got a few um, uh, more points to share with our community tonight. And thank you all again for joining us. I just want to make sure um, the hot topics, I'm sorry, the, the polling for hot topics, we will take a look at that. We've had about 20 people respond to that poll. So we'll closely look at what information you'd like to see in the future and do our best to provide um, you with information that's going to be helpful and relevant um, as we navigate this uh, shelter in place together. Oh, one other website before I go really quickly, the County Office of Education has become uh, the single point where they're compiling information for all of our different school districts. Monterey County has 24 school districts and they are providing, they are closed, the schools are closed, but we are providing lunches to all children under the age of 18. Uh, so information about where those school lunch sites um, all throughout the county are is posted um, on the County Office of Education website. All right, Jane. All you. Thank you, Wendy. Um, really appreciate all this um, information. And uh, someone did email uh, asking if these links could be sent to them via email. So I imagine that the answer is yes to that. We can we can do that. Um, so I yeah. just wanted to, wanted to talk a, a little bit about um, how. Uh, and I see that on the uh, Monterey County Office of Education, they they have tips for coping with stress during a pandemic. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about how we try to stay sane um, uh, while, you know, while this is going on. And I, I know for me with, you know, there's so much that we, we're starting to know more, but there's a lot that we don't know. And the, the whole way that certainly my work life um, is uh, taking shape is completely different from the way it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, this thing of um, sheltering in place, trying to figure out what does that mean? How do I, you know, um, so there's just, there's so much that's changing. And so I, I notice that I, I seem to have kind of a level of free floating anxiety. And um, the thing I notice is that it makes me uh, gives me a tendency to be a little bit crabby. So if 
anything happens that I don't like or that takes me by surprise, um, it's like all of my uh, free floating energy gets channeled right onto the lightning rod of whatever that is. And I have sort of a um, larger than life response to probably not a very critical um, situation. So I just wanted to acknowledge that to one degree or another, we're probably all having um, reactions kind of like that. And uh, one of the things that I've found is that um, you know, really focusing on, there is a lot that we can't control, but there are some things that we can. Um, and one of them is getting information that you can trust. And so that's why it's so important to me to have the county be a resource for trusted information. Because when we, when we know that things are being uh, planned for, when we know what's going on, it helps us just not be quite as anxious um, as, as we might have been before. The other thing that I find helpful, of course, is keeping my routine, going for walks in the morning, which is my standard time, but getting exercise, making sure that I eat on, this, on a similar schedule and eat as healthily as I can, sleeping, making sure that I get my sleep. Uh, it's really, really important to kind of keep my physical system uh, operating as well as, as it can, and I can. Um, and then also uh, really making sure, because I, I live by myself uh, with a cat, so I recommend cuddling uh, animals if you have them, that's a great stress reliever. Um, but also I've had to be very systematic and make sure that I reach out to friends, um, family, uh, and I have found that for me, two conversations with other people per day is my minimum. Um, when I can talk to them about how I'm doing um, or even just be silly, whatever it is, um, but two is, is absolutely the minimum for me. Um, and so I would encourage you to get, find what your, you know, who's in your social network and really um, keep that activated. Um, the, there are quite a few tools available to help um, with guided meditations. Um, there's, uh, there are um, websites in addition to the Monterey County Office of Education that have tips. I noticed that on WikiHow, um, there are some really great tips for working with your family members to um, create uh, ways to keep each you guys uh, from getting on each other's nerves too much, you know, having, um, kind of zones where people can um, get away from uh, each other uh, when we need some peace and quiet and some alone time and ideas about games and uh, ways to have fun uh, while, we're, um, while we're sequestered. And um, I think, uh, let's see, WikiHow had some good ones. There's a, um, uh, I got an email from the Parenting Connection of Monterey County that had some really great tips about how to engage children um, during, during these um, sheltering days. Um, and I would encourage people to check out their website. Um, also the First Five website has some um, really some good ideas about how to engage effectively with, uh, with children. The, um, the National Alliance for Mental Illness has um, great tips about mental health um, and how to how to maintain it. Um, there's also a, an app called Sanvelo, S-A-N-V-E-L-L-O, that is a way of accessing um, kind of just what what you might need in the way of um, of uh, strategies. And I think there's um, at least one. Uh, set one part of the application that that you can get, and then it's that it's free. I'm sure you can upgrade and get lots more. That's um, that you can that you can pay for. But there's some really good tips uh, out there to to help um, keep us from uh, going completely bananas, um, even if we um, aren't. You know, we're not testing positive for the COVID virus, but um, you know there are other uh, health consequences. So really keeping ourselves um, as healthy as possible in 
mind, body, and spirit, I really encourage everyone to definitely reach out. It kind of creeps up on you sometimes. And so really being as proactive as possible uh, is something I, I recommend. Um, so I think we're getting close to the end of our time. Um, I, I did want to, sorry to interrupt, I wanted yes. to just note everyone to um, the chat um, area and space if they're not so familiar with the Zoom, but that we've been linking all of, pretty much trying to capture all of the websites that have been discussed in the chat. So that's all there. And then additionally, if anyone wants to be added to your distribution list for your newsletter, um, they can email the district for that so spelt out D I S T R I C T and then the number four at co dot monterey dot c a dot u s and they can be added and then that way they can actually continue to receive the emails um, directly that has the um, the links and a lot of the information there as well so just wanted to make sure everyone knew that that if if or they can contact us at eight three one eight eight three seven five seven zero and we can add them to the list so just direct people there too thank you Lori. so and am i unmuted yes you're good yes i just wanted to say that uh, Alyssa asked a question about testing capacity and i wrote a link in, in the chat box so um if people want to look at that uh they can i know we get that question a lot we hear anecdotally stories um, and we see stories in the press about people who have been sick with symptoms of COVID, but um, they were not able to get a test. Um, testing capacity has been increased and the public health lab is still focusing on kind of the most critical um, test groups, uh, people who need to be hospitalized, people who have symptoms, who've been in contact with somebody who tested positive and people who have had some recent international travel but your doctor can order a private test um those aren't being turned around as quickly as the public lab and i know that's been frustrating for some people and also it's really up to the individual doctors to determine if they want to order that test um, and there even if you order through a private lab there's still um a, a lack of um I shouldn't say a lack, but there's their their abilities. Their ability to turn these tests around is still limited by personnel and and uh, the number of kits. So some doctors are not going to order a test if you're sick and they don't think you have COVID, or they might think you have a, a mild case and they'll just tell you to stay home. Um, so I know that's frustrating for people. We know there's more cases out there than are being registered in the numbers, but um, uh, that's a situation that health officials are discussing and making the best decisions they can for the good of the all. Um, anyway, that's, that's my answer on the test question. Thanks. Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate that. That is a question that is, uh, I think on people's minds quite a bit. Um, and I want to just thank everyone for being here and participating. Great participation on the poll and on the chat. And um, so I want to just encourage you, to, to um, be involved. You, we as community members can be helpful um, in this. Um, you, can, you can do the census, you can help the nonprofits that are helping the, the people most um, at, at risk. Um, you can contribute to the food bank. I mean, there are just so many things that we can do um, even from the, uh, from the sheltering spot where we're in. So, Thank you for your participation, and I look forward to seeing um, many of you next week when we when we do this again. And we will have we will dedicate more time to some of the um, stress reduction and mental health issues, um, so that uh, we have what we need to stay healthy in in all uh, in all ways. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank thanks for you. joining us.